Among the 12 propositions on California's ballot this fall is a measure that would put an end to the current cash bail system. Proposition 25 would instead have the state rely on a risk-based algorithm. And here to break it down for us is reporter Nigel Duara of CalMatters. Nigel, thank you so much for being with us. Hi, Alex. Thanks for having me. Let's just start with a quick primer for those who've never had experience with the bail system in California. Remind us how it works as of now. Sure. So right now in California, 45 other states in the Philippines, the only places in the world where how much money you have or how much property you have can get you out of jail. So the idea is that if you can pay, then you can get out. Nowhere else does it that way and is doing it more the way that this proposition wants to go. So this proposition, as I mentioned, would say, okay, instead of maybe putting up, you know, $10,000 bail bond uh, to make sure that you show up for a court hearing, that's usually the intended purpose of bail. How would this algorithm work instead? Sure. So there's two things happening. There's going to be an algorithm that will say a person should be a low release, a medium release, or high risk and should not be released. But there's also going to be the judge's discretion. So the algorithm is not the be-all, end-all. It doesn't decide whether somebody gets in or gets out. But it will act as kind of a scorecard. It will assess everything that someone has done on their criminal record, and it will issue whether they should be immediately released without any kind of uh, being held in jail, whether they should maybe be able to get another look, or if they should absolutely not be released. Now, the judges can make their own decisions, but that scorecard is still going to exist. So if you see a judge who has a bunch of people who were rated as low risk, but instead are being held, can make a decision that way. On the other hand, if there's someone who's releasing all kinds of folks, no matter what their risk for, that's another indication for people to make a decision. So, Nigel, let's talk about who is in support of Proposition 25. Where does this come from? Sure. So this started as SB 10 in the legislature in 2018, and it passed. So according to the legislature, we should already be two years into this system. What happened was, as soon as it did pass, the bail industry immediately filed um, for this ballot measure to get a signature. They challenged it. So that's where we are today, is taking something the legislature, the assembly already passed, and figuring out what happens to it now with the voters having a choice on whether they want this or not. And and the bail industry, which we'll get to in a moment, right, they're they're not an insignificant lobbying force, to be sure. But who says, yeah, we should keep going in the direction of SB 10, we should pass Proposition 25, we should move away from this cash bail system? Who are some of the strongest supporters of, of this ballot measure? Sure. So Clippers owner Steve Ballmer's put a lot of money behind this. And really, centrist Democrats and the majority of the Democratic Party and the endorsements have come in in favor of this. They say we need to end cash bail right now. And the only option, our best option right this minute, is passing this ballot measure. So let's go for it. And now let's talk about the opposition. And, and this is where I think things get really interesting, because there's a couple different camps here. Let's start off, of course, with the pro- probably most uh, predictable camp uh, here, which is, of course, the bail bond industry. Uh, this seems like this would be very bad news for them. What are some of the arguments that they have been making about why we should not do away with the status quo? Sure. And it's the bail bond industry in lockstep with law enforcement. Um, that those two groups argue that changing the system, that yes, the system is not perfect and needs to be improved. But even with that said, there's no reason to go to this algorithm and to change things up. Um, Obviously, cynically, you could say the bail industry is protecting its existence, protecting its its financial existence. What law enforcement is saying is that this is going to lead to way more releases, putting way more people on the street that shouldn't be out there that this will take away their ability to hold people that could be dangerous because an algorithm has suggested that this person should instead be released. Uh, And then there are some people who say, look, we're not necessarily on board with the current system, but we don't think Prop 25 is quite the answer either. Tell us about this particular camp. Sure. And this is led by Human Rights Watch um, and some some of the more left Democratic groups. Um, The ACLU is neutral on the issue, but has said, you know, let's be careful. Uh, In 2018, when this was SB 10, my colleague, Laurel Rosenthal, wrote that this could be the issue that divides the left. And that day has come to pass, that's here now. The left is basically divided between more centrist arguments who say we need to end cash bail, we need to do something that changes the system, and the further left argument which says this system is just as bad as the system we have now. The trusting an algorithm to do this and judicial discretion will only exacerbate the existing racial divide, inequality, um, the socioeconomic divide, and the people are still going to be held in jail 
for things they did a long time ago that existed under a previous system for which they were charged because they have black skin or brown skin and they were held in jail, now that's still gonna count, them, count against them. So what the further left wants is a system that doesn't take that kind of stuff into account that would judge somebody's bail situation on their crime right now. And there's some pretty interesting cases I heard in one discussion of uh, Prop 25, the case of a gentleman who stole a bottle of cologne and $5, and uh, he awaited trial in jail for nearly a year. His bail was set at $350 thousand dollars which you got to think if he's you know stealing five dollars and a bottle of cologne he probably doesn't have it can you tell us just a little bit nigel about what bail amounts in 2020 what do they usually look like and and who's able to afford them and who isn't sure the median bail amount for a crime and this is most crimes that you'll see is set at fifty thousand dollars which sounds like a lot of money what you need to be able to produce is ten percent of that if you're going to go to a bail bonds so that's five thousand dollars and that's non-recoverable what the yes side on this argument says is, look, if you're going to take out, you're going to, if you're a person who does uh, not of means, who cannot afford this, you're going to do one of two things. Either you're going to take out a loan that you can't afford and maybe put some property at risk, or, and this happens a lot, you're going to plead guilty because you want to get out. And those guilty pleas, whether you're innocent, whether you're not guilty for some other mitigating circumstance, those don't matter anymore. And the person will take the guilty plea, it'll go on the record, and the next time something happens, it'll count against them even more. And I'm curious, Nigel, too, because you mentioned they're non-refundable. Uh, how does that wind up impacting those who are in the midst of our uh, judicial system? Because, you know, not everybody necessarily has an extra thousand dollars to spare. Sure. Uh, that's where you find people taking out loans they can't afford. That's where you find them putting up property that uh, that they may lose. Um, that's sort of, again, exacerbating this, this cyclical system where people may commit a crime and then be charged and get out and have to do something for money. They may commit a crime again. This is what the yes side is arguing is a cycle that needs to stop. Nigel Duara of Cal Matters, thank you so much for telling us all about Proposition 25, which will be on the California ballot this fall. We appreciate it. Thanks so much, Alex.